this service for Bransgore, Thorny Hill and Hinton Admiral on Epiphany Sunday. Here are some words from Matthew's eyewitness account of the life of Jesus about the three magi, the three wise men or three kings. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Uh, you may know if you've been watching the news that we are now part of a tier four, which it means that there's a very uh, serious risk from coronavirus and uh, a very significant warning in, in place for us. And the decision that we've made uh, as the leadership of our benefits is to go back to having just services uh, online for the time being, with some sadness, I should say. Um, that means that we've decided to do things slightly differently. Uh, this YouTube service is going to be a little bit uh, shorter, and you can take it on it on its own, uh, if you like. It'll feature two hymns, uh, a Bible reading, and a short talk uh, about that Bible reading. And then if you want to join another service um, on, at 9.30 on Sunday mornings, there'll be a Zoom service uh, get in touch if you'd like the link so that you can join that. And that will feature um, live music, which you can sing along to, with a service sheet and a time to be led in prayer and maybe some interactive things like quizzes and interviews and things uh, like that. We'd like to try and replicate some of what we do um, in our in-person services. And the next in-person services will be on um, the first Sunday in February. Um, so not much, but uh, not long until that but of course it is right, we think, to take this step to keep people safe, but also to play our part uh, in stopping the spread of COVID-19. Uh, so I hope you can bear with this, this change and I hope you'll enjoy joining us on, on Zoom. If you don't know how to do that, uh, please do get in touch. The website, which has my email address on it, is available in the uh, d description. So underneath this video, you can see that. And if you get our weekly email, uh, then you'll be given the Zoom link so you can join in the live service as well. Uh, the Magi, the wise men, went on a, a journey, a journey of discovery, and over the next month we're going to go on another Bible journey, not with the three kings, uh, but with Joseph, uh, that great man uh, from the Old Testament. He journeyed into the unknown, uh, a journey which was both uh, terrifying and, and surprising and, and uncertain, and maybe that's how we feel going into 2021. It feels like a frightening journey into the unknown. Well, we're going to travel with Joseph on his journey. And at the end of that journey, Joseph was able to see the almighty hand of God and his goodness in all of the ups and downs of that journey. And my prayer that we'll be able to see uh, the same somehow through what we discover looking at the Bible's account of the life of Joseph. Uh, so that's what we're going to have for our Bible reading in a moment. And then a talk afterwards. But first we're going to sing that great Epiphany Sunday hymn, As with gladness men of old did the shining star behold. As with gladness men of old did the guiding star behold. So most gracious God, may we evermore be led to Thee. As with joyful steps they sped to that lowly manger bed, there to bend the knee before Him whom heaven and earth adore. So may we with willing feet ever seek thy mercy seat. As they offered gifts most rare at that manger rude and bare, so may we with holy joy pure and free from sins alloy. All our costliest treasures bring, Christ to thee, our heavenly King. Holy Jesus, every day, keep us in the narrow way, and 
and when earthly things are past, bring a ransom soul at last, where they need no star to guide, where no clouds like glory hide. In the heavenly country bright, need they no created light, now it's light, it's joy, it's crown, now it's sun which goes not down. Therefore ever may we sing Alleluia's to our King. Today's reading is taken from Genesis chapter 37, beginning at the first verse. Jacob lived in the land where his father had stayed, the land of Canaan. This is the account of Jacob. Joseph, a young man of seventeen, was tending the flocks with his brothers, the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives, and he brought their father a bad report about them. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons, because he had been born to him in his old age, and he made a richly ornamented robe for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to them, Listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaths of corn out in the field, when suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright, while your sheaths gathered round mine and bowed down to it. His brothers said to him, Do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said. Then he had another dream, and he told it to his brothers. Listen, he said, I had another dream, and this time the sun and moon and eleven stars were bowing down to me. When he told his father, as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, What is this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in mind. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, Happy New Year. Uh, How are you feeling about 2021? Has it made a good start? Uh, so far, but it's got to be better than 2020, uh, hasn't it? Wasn't the best of best of years. How can we be sure, though, that 2021 is going to be any better uh, than 2020? Well, our reading from the Bible uh, today, part of a, a, a new series looking at the life uh, of Joseph, is going to help us understand how 2021 could work out very, very uh, well for us. Um, It's a story all about a young man who goes on an adventure, a journey, a terrifying journey into the unknown. It's a journey which has its ups and downs, its uncertainties and its fears, perhaps just like 2021 might have as we think about it uh, from this point onwards. And in amongst that journey, uh, Joseph and we as readers of the Joseph story are able to see that God is in charge of all of the chaos and all of the uncertainty uh, that goes on in the life of Joseph. In the next few minutes, we're going to start the story of Joseph. And as we do that, we're going to see uh, two great things. Firstly, we're going to see that God's big plan is working. And secondly, we're going to see that that is no with no thanks to Jacob and to Joseph. So firstly then, God's big plan is working. I wonder if you were here at church last Sunday, uh, you recognise uh, this. This was one of my Christmas presents. Okay, it wasn't really a Christmas present, but let's say it was one of my Christmas presents. Uh, it is a jar full of full of sand. If gosh, if it was one of my Christmas presents, it would be one of the best ones, definitely. Jar full of uh, sand. Why why did I ask uh, for this? Well, you may remember uh, that God made a promise to Abraham some generations before. Joseph and thousands of years before the birth of Jesus Christ and in that promise God said to Abraham look you know you are the only person who is friends with me now who enjoys a special relationship uh, with me I am your God and you are why my person and well one day there are going to be billions of people like you God said to Abraham that was his 
promise. He said, just imagine the, the a beach. And on the beach, imagine how many grains of sand there are on the beach. That is how many people are going to be friends with me, God said to Abraham. God's plan was that one day billions and billions of people like Abraham would be friends uh, with him forever. That's the big plan of the Bible. It has everything to do with not just a jar of sand, but a beach covered in sand. Now, we worked out using some maths uh, that this jar contains approximately 904,320 grains of sand on the basis that one cube centimetre of sand has about 8,000 grains of sand in it. That is a lot of people one day to be friends with God. I wonder, are you one of those people, would you say, friends with God because of God's big plan, God's big promise? Well, the question to ask in this at this point in the Bible, two generations later from Abraham, is how has the promise gone so far? And what we can see straight away is that God's promise is going really, really well. At the time of Abraham, there was just one grain of sand, if you like, one person who was friends with God. Well, how many are there uh, now? Just a little bit of counting. We can try to work, uh, try to work this out. We're told that Esau has 12 uh, sons, that Jacob has 12 sons. We don't know how many of them are married at this point, but let's just let's just say uh, that maybe 20 of them are, are married. So let's put 20 wives into the mix. That gets us 44 uh, grains of sand, 44 people who are friends uh, with God. We don't know how many children they've got at this point, but let's just imagine conservatively between all of those uh, people that there might be 40 children um, as well. That gets us up to 84. And let's include two, of course, uh, Jacob and his wives, uh, Leah, uh, Rachel, Bilhah and, and Zilpah. And that gets us up to 89 grains of sand. 89 people who are friends with God, it might not seem like uh, like very much. I've got my my tweezers here, in fact, and let's um, let's try and take out 80, 89. This may take an hour or so just to count these eighty nine grains of uh, sand. Here we go. Uh, it's quite a small amount. I think it's probably about that much. Okay, it's not a lot, is it? But it's a huge increase. Now, one thing that twenty twenty was was really good for uh, was graphs. If you are if you are a graph. 2020 was was your year, uh, wasn't it? Here is a graph that will help you uh, see the exponential growth of God's people in just two generations, going from one person to 89 people. I reckon that is an 8,800% increase. In other words, uh, Abraham represents just 1.2% of the total number of God's people that exist at the time when Joseph was 17. At this point in the Bible, God's big plan is working. God is keeping his his promises. And you know, there has never been a day when God hasn't been at work keeping his promises. And we're getting closer and closer and closer towards the day when billions and billions of people are friends with God through Jesus Christ, his rescuer son, who was sent, as, as Mary said, remembering that promise of mercy. God is at work. And if there's one thing we can be sure about, about 2021, is that God will be at work. Now, when people read the Old Testament part of the Bible, people often look at it and say, well, I wonder who the hero is here. Maybe it's King David, or maybe it's it's Joshua, or maybe it's Moses, or maybe it's Jacob, or maybe it's Joseph. But let me tell you one thing that you should always bear in mind, that the hero of the Bible is God. Human beings in the Bible do all sorts of weird and wonderful, cruel and awful things. Uh, and we shouldn't necessarily take lessons from them. And we shouldn't definitely take lessons from Jacob or Joseph. But one thing is always certain. No matter what people do, God is working his purposes out. To grow his people, God is at work and his big plan is succeeding. And if there's one thing we can be sure of about 2021 is that God is going to be doing that this year as well. I find that really encouraging. No matter what ways I might mess up or find things really difficult in 2021, nothing is impossible for God and he's going to be at work doing his things in 2021. And that is with no thanks to me because it was with no thanks to Jacob 
or Joseph back in the day. Let's, uh, let's have a look at this. Again, this is Genesis chapter 37. And let's meet Joseph. He's 17 years old. He was tending the flocks with his brothers, the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And he brought their father a bad report about them. What was the first thing we learned about Joseph? He is a snitch. He's a grass. He dobs his brothers in there, all out at work. And Joseph comes home specially uh, to tell on them. He wants his dad to be pleased. And he certainly is. This is what it says. Now, Israel, which is another name for Jacob, loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he'd been born to him in his old age and he made him a richly ornamented robe for him. That Technicolor dream coat, the coat of, of many colours. Well, how did that work out? It's supposed to be a nice gesture, stupid gesture. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Now, it's okay to have favourite things in some areas of life. Like, I could have a favourite mug, couldn't I? So like all good vicarages, our house is full of mugs. Maybe yours is as well. And uh, I wonder if you've got a favourite mug. I like all of these. Uh, this one's rather, rather good. I took this to the beach this morning. It's got a lid, so it stays nice and warm. I love this mug. Uh, as well, one of my daughters made that uh, at school. It's not perfect, it's got a big crack down it now, uh, but it's still great. Uh, this one was a birthday present from uh, James. I like this one, it's nice and big. Uh, this one was uh, a birthday present from Mo and Ken, and I love this one uh, because it reminds me that I am an awesome cyclist. Uh, this one here is one I... Yeah, it looks dodgy, doesn't it? I painted this one as a present for Kelly some years ago. Uh, this one here is very sentimental. That was Kelly's when she was um, a little girl, Beauty and the Beast. But I think probably at the moment, this might be my favourite uh, mug. It is one of those St Mary's Bransgore uh, mugs. It's one of the mugs that we used to drink from after church service. Yes, it has been stolen and ended up at the vicarage. Uh, but it reminds me of happier times when after the service we could share fellowship together and encourage each other. And those days will return. So every time I drink out of this mug, I think about that. However, when it comes to people, and particularly people in your family, having favourites is toxic. It is absolutely brutal. It's a great way to tear a family apart. You know, I remember me and my sisters arguing about this uh, all the time. Oh, of course, Dad is nice to you because you're the favourite. But there was never any evidence that one child in particular was a favourite. And if you've lived in a family where it was obvious that one child was a favourite, you know how bad this is. And hopefully you may have resolved not to do that if you've got a family as well. Favouritism is poisonous, whether it's favouritism in the family or favouritism in the workplace where some some people seem to get uh, rewarded and some people seem to get ignored. It's absolutely toxic. It's stupid behaviour. And it's not the only stupid behaviour that happens here. That's stupid behaviour from Jacob. But here's some more stupid behaviour from Joseph. Joseph had a dream and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to them, listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaths of corn out in the field when suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright while your sheaths gathered round mine and bowed down to it. Of course, Joseph had a, a dream that predicted his future power and success. There's nothing wrong uh, with that. But how Joseph chooses to communicate that to his older brothers is absolutely stupid. You know, he doesn't say, well, I'll keep this to, my, to myself. He says, ah, you'll be pleased to hear this. One day I'm going to be in charge of you. Big brothers, how do you feel uh, about that? It's utter arrogance. It's utter insensitivity. It's no surprise that they despise him for his lack of emotional intelligence. His real pride, his desire to, to rub them up the wrong way. Now, God's people in this part of the Bible are far from perfect. In fact, they behave in ways which are really, really stupid, really, really unloving, really, really unkind. And yet that dream 
that Joseph has, and we'll see this later on, and you may know the Joseph story already, is a little glimpse of the way that God is going to, even more than he has already done so far, grow his people and rescue his people. Even though God's people do stupid things, that doesn't stop God from being amazing. That doesn't stop God from keeping his promises and working his purposes out. God can't be stopped. And he's not going to be stopped in 2021, just as he wasn't stopped in the days of Joseph and Jacob. Even if we make really stupid decisions this year, even if we really hurt and upset other people, that's not going to stop God. Because God's big plan is working and it's going to carry on working and working and working forever and ever until, as the Bible says, the earth is full of the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. Amen. very much for joining us uh, today. If you've not done so uh, yet, please do like the service and uh, subscribe so you don't miss uh, another one. And please do join us if you're able to do so using uh, the Zoom link Sunday mornings at half past nine live from the Brand School uh, Vicarage. So please do join us uh, for that, a little bit more interactive uh, in-person service. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.